गुड मॉर्निंग नीरज भाई गुड इवनिंग बोले आई कैन थैंक एनफ यस आई नो इतने सखल उठी की छुआ उ Uh, 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 okay, so it is ten o'clock, and I think we will start. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Give me just a maybe sixty seconds to give a brief intro about nearby. Uh, Satya, we can start. Unmuted. Okay. Perfect. Well. Uh, Muted. Everyone, Nirabhai is an alumni of Batch 2001. My loving super senior. With my experience dealing with Nirabhai, in one sentence I can describe him as very friendly and welcoming personality. So uh, Chandrubai is on the line, who is his classmate. I am sure he will agree with me. Ah, uh, Nirabhai born and brought up at Jharsugudha and. Uh, share his birthday with michelle obama which is on january 17th he is currently living in the united states of america with his beautiful family mrs kumudini roidas and two wonderful kids nirvai loves to celebrate his wedding anniversary in international workers and labor day which is on may 1st Nilo is currently working in one of the world's largest software services company. He is an expert in managing big QA teams for testing projects. He is also very strong in project management skills with an ability to drive end-to-end -end project execution. First time in the history of our department, she was the key person to her first alumni function, which is way back in 2001-2002. After 15 years of first union, which is in 2001-2002, and a department going to have a three decades of experience, unfortunately, it didn't take shape. but by seeing the actively engagement of many senior people or senior leaders like nirav bhai i am confident when we go together work nothing is him we will work harder to make it. with this hope to make our association a great one i welcome nirav bhai to share his experience and address our beloved alum and students over to you nirav bhai Thank you, Mole. Uh, thank you for a brief introduction, uh, and I will be a little bit more, okay? But uh, I'm happy. We have so many data points. Now, coming back to audience, uh, the first thing I want to know is um, I want to know your expectations or tell like uh, what you're expecting from these sessions. Uh, so you know, my, my from my side, one basic expectation would be when we talk talking about software development, which all comes in one umbrella, and why something a junior people like student they need something to learn about software testing, and at the same time, uh, people in the industry telling about that hey, automation is there, so no testing required. Yes. So even it came in the news saying that some of the jobs of the software industry will be um, going away. Out of that is, uh, I saw that the news anchor was reading confidently, the software testing will be going out. I agree with yeah. you. Any other questions? Any any other expectations? My. Oh. 
anything you will cover with respect to cloud okay with software testing covers that okay as well as uh, uh, how software testing in the current trend will choose a career option that is another biggest question for my end okay okay got it Do you have anyone from the uh, current batch or who are um, searching for job? Anyone in the um, this session? Uh, okay. Good. No, Good. some Muted. students are there. Muted. Uh, they have logged in. They can see the presentation, but I can see their audio is not active. But I'm sure they must be hearing us or seeing the presentation. Okay. Yeah. So we will we'll move further. Okay. okay. So good, good uh, points, and I'll try to touch base these expectations. Uh, the two points are now, and uh, Murli has rightly touched uh, because uh, there are so many rumors saying that the testing job will be completely uh, out of the market, as there are uh, lots of automation happening across the industries. So I'll move to the next slide. And this slide is uh, for a brainstorming session, and I don't know how much of you will participate, but I will encourage uh, more and more participants, at least those who are having the audio. For time being, let's forget that we all are from the IT industry, and we all are like we are developers, we are programmers, we are managers. Let's forget that one, and just think like we are just a normal person. Searching for a job, and there is a job description which come in the ad. It is saying that there is a position, open position for a cook, and the job description says needed a cook with good behavior who could prepare breakfast, lunch, tea or coffee, and dinner for a reputed family. So I want to invite you all for a brainstorming sessions. Let's see, like, is the job description clear enough? Is it having everything? And are we ready to take up this job? And if you want to take up this job, what is our skill? Is it going to match? I hope all it is clear. So, so let's go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Who want to apply? Who want? Let's start with Murli. Start with Murli. Okay. So okay. my first. So my first. Uh, is if I understand. If I understand correctly. Come up with a. Come up with a job description. All participants are muted and they can unmute them. All participants are unmuted. Uh, okay, so I, I was in mute. Uh, okay, Nila Bhai. Yeah, okay, just, just to uh, put that, okay, come up with a job description for a cook, right? Yes. You read the end. Your thing is, you have to see if you are going to apply for this job. Is your skill that you have currently going to match for this job? And what are the skills you are going to learn or you are going to acquire? That is the uh, topic. Can I also ask um, other people to um, participate? 
at course you are having the uh, at least 12 participants we have murli uh, 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 so you know why i joined back it was a question something for me okay. i logged out my understanding is that is that for coming up the job description for a cook right see yes it is job description is for a cook okay. and you assume that you are looking for a job and you are going to apply this job and if your skill is going to match for this job and to sustain in the your cooking career what are the skill that you are going to acquire that is the okay. uh, scenario okay okay so the my first point would be to uh, as a cook i first should understand my stakeholders need in terms of the person for whom i am cooking for this or who are my customers uh, their preference in terms of food right whether vegetarian non vegetarian prefer spicy medium spicy high spicy yeah you are right what else yeah So over to others. Yeah, I could see you are having some of the also participants who are ex expert cook, expert cook. And how much quantity you have to cook? Quantity. And what are the recipe required? What are the even in case of breakfast also, what type of breakfast the family liked? Yes, yes. With the same right. with respect to lunch and the tea and dinner. Yeah. So, so, so what, what should the your food should not cook. Yeah, like like yeah. you like brought some points. Some so, if you want to work in business, business, if you want to grow in the career, what should be your skill? You should know how to cook first of all with your limited raw materials. What other materials are there? In, in, in what i'm telling ingredients for uh, uh, preparing any food whether it's a breakfast or lunch or high tea or dinner uh, uh, and how much uh, the customer is going to pay so that you know uh, i would prepare accordingly I, i would put that effort accordingly so when you say pay is it like going to pay for your service or paying for the budget to buy the things paying for the budget okay paying for the budget you are right good points guys please participate we are having more than 12 participants this is a brainstorming sessions and i need everyone to participate at least and quality of food also yeah yeah quality of food of food How much the time uh, of the customer, like you know, how you know, how you like you know, when we do some mistake, some mistake, let's say some celebrity, some uh, girl, sir, girl, sir, gender specific also, like you know, uh, some they, they they may react differently when you do some mistake, and uh, some women they may react really bad when you do some mistake. So how sensitive and then you know, I need to be careful accordingly. Uh, customer sensitivity sensitivity yes so may may I know your name yes yeah, sanjay sanjay namaskar okay i saw we are having some uh, also uh, ladies participants they are the expert in cook can i get some of feedback anyone so anyway we got some good points like um uh, i wish i could have got some more points but um murli brought the point that um he want to look about the customer he want to look about the veg and non veg what kind of foods is going to prepare the spice levels now Chandra also uh, brought some good points, same like veg and non-veg and uh, the quality. Now the budget we touched upon the gender specific and what the customer uh, react. So the reason why I brought this slide here. Currently, when we are giving for a job description, 
it is same like as a cook. So if you see this um, description, it is saying that they're looking for a customer or a cook who is having the good behavior, who can prepare the breakfast, lunch, coffee, and dinner. And believe me, whatever this is, this is very very high level. Uh, one second. Who is Duke? Uh, you asking for control? Hello. It might be Mr. Ganley. Somebody call yeah. the somebody call the Duke keyboard control. Keyboard control. It's okay. Ignore that, please. Just give me a second. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, what is happening in the current industry um, is whatever we are learning in our school, our colleges, we are learning about breakfast, we are learning about lunch, we are learning about tea and coffee, we are learning about the dinner. But what is the required thing that is not being taught in the classes. So, for example, when I go for a breakfast, the breakfast could be a veg, non-veg, it could be idli, dosa, and you name it. If you try to list it down, that will go thousands and thousands. Similar to it for the lunch, similar to it for the coffee, similar to it for the dinner. Now, what we have been chasing, like say I know idli. Now, we are highlighting that saying that, okay, I know idli. So what I'm trying to say is we're highlighting a technology. So, so some are saying I want to work in Java. I want to work in C or somebody saying I want .NET or somebody saying C sub. Or somebody say no, I want to become expert in the Agile. But the core part, the core part is these things. So there is there is time we need to understand the complete uh, as a holistic and not run just for one technology. So let me move to the next slide and see um, what is uh, what I'm trying to say. If you see all over the world, you'll find there are millions of organizations. The question is, why are these organizations? The reason behind that is these organizations have been set up to serve the society in their own way. And if you see the organizations, it could be different. It could be either a business or it could be either a non-business. When we say business, some organizations, they have set up to earn some profit. So profit is the motive, the serve the society. At the same time, they, they want to gain some profit. Non-business like governments and other non-profit organizations, even they function similar to the business organizations, but their motive is not to gain the profit. Now, this business, business, you get the business like merchandising, like retail stores, where they get the products or from a suppliers, and they will sell that to consumer. You get so many manufacturing industries where they can manufacture a product, they can sell it. Or they may be having a supplier who will supply the raw materials, they will manufacture something and they will sell in the market. We are having so many services companies. So if you say basically all these companies, they will be selling either goods and services. If you see this slide, you take example of any of the um, organizations, they will be mostly having two two sections. One is support functions and one is primary functions. Uh, just to check uh, anyone, is my slide uh, is visible and uh, are you able to follow this one? Yes. So currently I'm slaying the corporate management functions. Uh, that's the correct slide, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So okay. if you see this slide, if you see the upper part, the upper part we are having the support functions and the if you see the below part we are having something called the primary functions. So your primary functions contains products, distribution 
and you see the support part we are having research design financing legal services information system accounting human resource and purchasing so if you see any organizations in a medium size or large size definitely will be getting some of these functions now how it works primary functions these people they are the core business people they are the actual persons who run the business now who are the support functions support functions these are the support systems or these are the people who provide the required informations and services to the primary functions people so that they can run the business so this is how it works and out of these all these support functions the information systems is the part where we are expert or what we are saying the it industry where you use the computer systems let me go a little further now you can see how these how these components of a computer based uh, information system works you can see we are having database we are having softwares we are having hardwares there are people who are working for the organizations we are having telecommunications and there are some process and procedures some guidelines how the how the organization works here is see how the business scenario work like just to achieve a tax so this example you can see here this is for e-commerce process for placing a purchase order where you can see a person on the top right left side this person is preparing a requisition to purchase something it will go for the higher his maybe his managers or those who are the concerns approvers to go for the if it is approved then it will go to the purchasing department who can take a decisions to purchase that one and they will again contact to some vendors and somebody will place the order to go to vendor and they will supply it this part you can see these are the uh, like modern technique like artificial intelligence expert systems virtual reality they are trying to go one one step ahead now till then uh, is there any questions or any questions why i am talking these areas you know i got a quick question here yes uh, i'm not sure the time will allow but this is the uh, the most interesting and complex slide where it covers uh, machine learning our robotics process automation uh, these are the key areas it covers right yes so i'm not sure whether it is possible to brief to the audience uh, about this machine i'm not going to cover learning. all these things uh, okay. i can i can come back uh, before okay. Okay. moving uh, i'm not going to cover artificial intelligence expert systems and virtual reality okay okay, okay. Okay. So I'll so I'll give the idea why I am touching all these things. Okay. 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 Now, see here. If you see this slide, okay. When we are going to the IT industry or wherever we are getting the trainings, maybe you are doing a MCA or we are doing the BTEC or engineering. What we learn is we learn all about the programming. If I'm not wrong. We learn about different programmings. We learn what is happening in the technologies. We learn about various processes, maybe algorithms. But very rarely we focus more on the business. Is it true? Tell me, tell me in how many sessions in our MCA classes they tell you about the different types of industry industry. what are the pharma industry what are the services areas have you seen have you guys these are the current industries in the market i don't think so and we know only but why i am saying this when you prepare yourself like about for both the knowledge you have the broad knowledge on what is happening in the industry. and if i want to work suppose i want to work in a manufacturing organizations 
So if I want to build my career in the manufacturing, I need to know more what happens in the manufacturing and who are the largest manufacturers, what kind of things they do, how their business process works. If you know that one, then that knowledge, that knowledge will take us further. I'll go and explain more. Now, if you see this slide, the how the software development works, we'll be having a dev box where we do all the software development. Here you follow all the, you know, the process, like you can say software development life cycles. Some people still follow the waterfall model, some, some follow the agile, and all the, all the main efforts happen here, all the developers are involved here, and they do the software development. Now, once they are done, they have developed the software, they will do the unit testing, and they will move to the QA box. This is the place where the QA people will get active, and they will test is and everything thoroughly. They will perform functional unit testing, they will perform the integration testing, they will perform the system testing, and finally, if everything is good, the business will take a decision, go or no go, and they will move to productions. And this is the very traditional way of doing. But if you see the current market, it, it goes like this. You can see they will be having a different path like N, production path, you can see N plus one project path, a multiple project path, and they'll be having multiple. Now, what is these boxes? The sandbox, this is the concept from the SAP. What they do, they install here, that can be also used like a training. And then it will move to dev box, where they do all the development. Now, the little variations, like when we are doing a development from the scratch, they will write the code. But if you see like the ERP area, like SAP and other ERP, everything is developed. What they need to do, they'll just implement it and they do some configurations, they do some new enhancement, or they may be making a custom development. Entire thing happens in the dev box. They will do the testings. And still also the QA people, they go and do the unit testing there. But mostly, once everything is done in the dev box, that goes to QA box, where the QA people, they will involve and they will be performing the integration testings, they'll perform the regression testings, and then it will again move to the stage box. It again depends upon the company, if they need a stage box or not, some people do not keep, some people keep, those who are very process oriented. But stage box is exactly like the production box with the same capacity, where you can do the full place testing, they can do the performance testings, rigorous testings before moving to productions. Now what happens once it moves to production? Once it goes to productions, it will be taken care of by the production support people. If something goes wrong, they will log a ticket. And immediately the production support people, they have to go and fix the issue. Now, if you can see for the current uh, market to do so many things, because there are companies, they are doing multiple projects. In a year, they are running hundreds of projects, and it is not feasible to do only in these two boxes. That is what they are doing. They are doing, they're having multiple paths, and all they will route it through to productions. It is same like for a one airport, multiple flights are taking off. And finally, that goes to productions. Is there any questions in this slide? Anyone? Is there any questions in this slide? What about that system provisioning? So, at what so stage? All stages. Stage, all stages. Okay, okay. So, so the admin team, they will take care of all these provisioning things before it comes to the development team to develop something, or before it comes to the QA team to test something. So, once they will provision all the systems, and they will say yes, it is ready for use, 
then only the other people can start going and work on these systems. Okay, thank you. Anyone? Anyone else? Okay. Now, here, these slides I talk about faster, cheaper, and better. Okay. So, whatever we learn, this, this process here that we're having different boxes, all these things depends upon what the company is thinking. Like, how are they really aggressive to do something very fast? Then it depends upon how much time they're allocating for you to testing. Okay. But mostly it has been seen now almost all the organizations, they want to do things faster and they want to do in a less budget, what you're calling cheaper, and they also want to do better. Now, to do all these things, we talk about a triangle, uh, that you know, uh, iron triangle, we say, all these things all depends on the time, cost, and quality. Now, if you try to make something dilute, it will affect the other things. Mostly, suppose you say, I want to reduce the cost, I want to reduce the time, your quality will hamper. But the requirement is whatever may be the cause, your quality should remain quality. The quality should not hamper. That is why, like when you are supposed delivering for a tester, that part has to be taken care of. And again, move back. Let me touch one more slide. Here we talk about the people, process, and technology. When we say testing job, it all depends upon the people, what kind of people are in the organizations, what is their vision, what they're trying to achieve. The process part, it will take you, the company is following what kind of process. I'm saying from testing point of view. For example, suppose some company is not following any process, the job of a tester will be held. Because today we tested something and tomorrow entire thing broke and they will ask you to again do something. So whatever test case we have written, whatever test plan you have done, entire thing is wasted. There is no point on doing anything. But there are companies who are very much process oriented. There are companies, um, they go process by process, like they'll go st stage by stage. They spend lots of time uh, for the unit testing, they spend time for the integration testing, they spend, they allocate a special time for the integration testing. In, in that cases, if the company is the process oriented, it is good for your career to um, grow. Not to touch more. Now, I have a few questions yeah. here. Yes, and in a way, I'll add one point here regarding the process. Yeah. See, uh, to, or in fact, uh, share a story, which is, I felt so bad by hearing this. Uh, recently, I was taking interview of a project manager, and uh, I was discussing about testing, automation, machine learning, uh, RPA, this robotic process. And surprisingly, the person tells me, because the people who are developing, they're the best in technology, because they're the developer. So we don't need the different team just thinking why we need, because they're developing, they can best test it which is very funny and uh, it shows that some companies how they are uh, then the, the process is so much you know or you can say they are very early stage or in other way you can say very bad process which is completely wrong <laughs> yeah. so because so, by this one you rejected the person before going to next stage <laughs> yes so see, uh, even I was, uh, I was also not having much experience on that one, how people think. But uh, in my one of the career, I, I got chance to visit to Canada. And I was just like a consultant and our job was really nothing to do, nothing to do there. What we used to do, our job is to just to understand that process. To understand that process and at the end we have to recommend what are the things they are going good and what is missing and what they need to do. And our job is to meet with everybody starting from the developers, starting from the project managers and understand their story. Okay. And like you said, developers come and they say, 
we have been spending day and night and we develop everything and at the end it is just pending for the testing and we don't know what they are doing and because of them only it is simply waiting and why there is a need of testing it should directly go live okay at the same time when we met the testers they have more pain points one testers came and told that there are so many developers and i am the only testers everybody coming every day they are doing some new versions and then they are putting it to me to test it so the ratio of developers and testers is not proper and uh, i am suffering day and night so that happens when the process is not defined that happens now so near it read this point it is one point here see yeah. for to mitigate this uh, ambiguity between the development team and operation team right yes so for that reason uh, one step ahead came the integration of development operation operation team is known as devops team okay so so anyone can do anything based on the time availability yes. so may many things are there right now in in what happens in it industry irrespective of the domain whether it can be retail or it can be or your automobile or it can be your telecom water may be based on that see what happens the devops team emerged due to that reason because the ambiguity and the blaming uh, solo solo mati means that tester will blame to development team developer will blame to tester team but at the end of the day who will suffer customer will suffer yes with the delivery so for that reason so the devops team emerged in uh, day to day life okay that's the point what i want to add here actually okay so uh, i know that my slides are not in a good sequence and maybe you are just it looks like a chaos but um, the murli or chandra or other participants um from the point we started right we started with the job description for a cook the same line i little bit tweaked it and this is the job description for a tester can i have some of your points on this one like what you feel is it description is clear and what it is saying and i want uh, at least more participants can somebody read this and just tell me what is your view on this Arun, yeah, please. Can somebody uh, participate, please? Can go ahead. Go ahead. Welcome, Arun. Uh, Nilo, what I feel that here actually the prior to deliver the food, we have to integrate the all the functionality is proper or not. That's what I. Uh, the software tester is uh, taking care of that. What I feel. Okay. no what should the skill of a tester here like say like somebody is saying i want to become a tester like who want to make a career in the testing industry correct now just looking look by this ad this what ad, the what the function thing what will be the what will be the skill match skill match in depth of functionality knowledge of that industry should have that tester should have okay what kind of uh, tools tools they are using are using which get the delivery of uh, you know expectation of the customer the okay. the time period and all that so tools for testing right yeah testing tools yeah what else so please those who are having accessible those who can uh, having audio please um, please uh, participate please please bring your points no no i think the basic skill set uh, should be uh, the tester should um, uh, know um, what should be the quality of uh, breakfast as far as um, uh, reputed family is concerned and uh, then what is quality for uh, their um, 
lunch and uh, dinner. Okay. So if he knows that quality probability testing uh, will go fine. Okay. So see, I'll tell you like why I why I put that slide for a cook. Okay. So say the pe persons or who are searching for a job. Okay. And everyone want to get a breakthrough, right? Everyone want to get organizations. And suppose somebody looking for a testing career. Correct. Now what happens? Let's take an example of a cook. The cook is saying, I want a job as a cook. And when you go and give an interview, the person will ask you that person hundreds of questions. Can you cook breakfast? Can you cook lunch? Do you know how to prepare tea? Do you know how to um, prepare dinner? Okay. And the person who is searching for a job, he has to get prepared for it and he will say, yes, I know to make breakfast. And he say, I know how to cook. And he may say, I, I know how to cook so chicken biryani. Or the person may be very great. The, the person may be very great in cooking with all the spices, nice things. And suppose the person got hired as a cook. He knows all kinds of great things. Now, after joining to that family, what would be his skill? Suppose he want to say, no, I have great expertise in cooking chicken biryani. biryani. And suppose it came out that the family, the direct family with whom he has joined as a cook, there is a veg family. And this person is saying, I know how to cook chicken biryani, mutton biryani. Is he going to sustain there? And what would be his action items, what he's supposed to do? That is the question. So, if, let me explain. If the, if the main item uh, which is sold in that uh, hotel is chicken biryani, then he will get hired. Yes, but suppose suppose he get hired. He got in the interview. He said that I know chicken biryani, I know breakfast, I know get, I know this one, and he got hired for that family. And then it came out that that family is veg lovers. They eat only veg. Now what that person should do? Is he going to continue there, or is he going to leave the organization, or what should be his skill set? He has to adapt that environment and learn whatever required. Yes. So exactly the reason why I'm putting that is it exactly happens in the testing industry. Okay. Why, why I'm saying this one? The reason behind that is if you go and see in the industry, there are hundreds of tools. You, you search for the open source tools. Believe me, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of tools for doing the all kinds of testing. You'll get the tools for the unit testing, you get the tools for the integration testing, uh, like uh, multiple tools. Okay. Now, suppose that person, somehow he masters some of the tools and that become his skill. And he got hired to a company also. Now, if the person should be sticking to same thing, say that I know this, I know this, I know this, I'm an expert. I am certified on this tool. Like earlier time, people who are, suppose somebody got a Java certification, they'll say, oh, I'm a Sun certified. And not only that, they will highlight that resume in the resume that I'm a Sun certified. And they will highlight everywhere. That, that kind of attitude is not going to work in the current industry. That is the main point that I'm doing in this session. Okay. The reason why I'm keeping is, because since we all have done the MCA degree or anyone has studied from a good organization, like a, sorry, good institutions who have done BTEC in computer science, they know it. They know what is a testing because it has been taught in the class. They know what is unit testing. They know what is integration testing. They know the system testing. They know how the software development life cycle works and they have done it. But mindset is when you go and look for a job, we become choosy. Some people say, no, I want to work only with the C. I want to work only with the networking. Some say, I want to work only with the Java because I'm a 
I've spent lots of time, I have got trained, I have got certified, I have to do this one. But it may be good for the development. But when you are going for a testing, that attitude is not going to work. Yes, it will work till you get the job, you got hired. The next time is moment to get a job, you need to start learning the organizations. Is don't limit the person should not limit only for that project. Okay, this project is doing some of the small applications, and I want to only do this one. Now, what happens in the real scenario? Let me see. Like that is why I was putting this diagram. If you see this diagram, okay, you can see in company they will be having all the different all the primary functions, and to run their business, they they will be having applications for everything. They will be having applications for manage their own employees. They will be having applications for manage their customers. There may be the internal users. There may be external users. There may be uh, uh, applications for their business people. Okay. So the person who want to grow as a tester, who want to really excel in that career, my suggestion is instead of focusing that particular tools or a, that piece of automation tools, they should focus, okay, how this organization works, what is their business functionality, what they do day to day, who are their customers, who are their end customers, what the business users need. And if they really know that, suppose they can tackle, then believe me, they can do the best because the reason why I'm saying is when the developer people, they develop something, they mostly focus on their area, what they need to develop. And if the tester knows what the business want, he can quickly do it and, and they can say, okay, this is how business want and this is the application, what has been developed. This application is supposed to be working this way. And they can quickly tell you, boss, this is the, uh, this is the way it should be. And definitely they can, uh, do more. And suppose that person knows, then there is no question saying that okay, this tester is not equal because he is not only a tester. The tester he knows the applications, he knows the tools. At the same time, he knows business. He knows how the business works, and he's the person who is saying this is how it works. So once that person can do that one, there is no question. Somebody say no, no, we don't need the testing people. Any question on this? Any questions till that? Now, just quickly uh, tell, you can see uh, what are the type of skills required for a tester. You can see I have highlighted four types of skills. What, what they say, I type skills, T type skills, there is a pie shaped skills and there is a com shaped skills. Let me explain what is these skills, the I type skills. What it means is the person is have expert in only one area. Like we said, the person may be knowing one tool, the person may be knowing one automation tool and he's saying, okay, I, I'm expert in this area. But that, with that skill, sustaining is not so easy. It requires that the person should have a broad knowledge or some good foundations. I'm talking of the t shapes And then the person knows the business. And then he he is expert in some of the tool. Then he can he can sustain. Now what the pie shaped is, the person is saying, yes, I am expert in the manual testing. Also, I know the manual testing at the same time. I know the automation testing. I can do it. And then the person is saying, I also know the business. Definitely, that persons can do good. What is calm shape is. The person is saying, yes, I know the business, I know manual testing, I know automation testing. At the same time, I know which are the you know, uh, commercial tools, the, uh, which are the current tools in the market, how it works. At the same time, also I know which are the open source tools. So he is saying, I am expert in all the areas. The benefit for that person is, okay, today we are running this project, yes, I can test it. 
I can do manual testings. And tomorrow you are saying, I want to do something new. That's something yes, I can do it. So if you see the skill set of a testing person, it is still the human functional. The person knows technical knowledge, the person knows functional knowledge, and at the same time, he has to have some other skills. The key skill, like you can say, he should be very good in verbal and written communications. He should, be, he should have really persons to do something. He knows technical skills and he should be having very good attitude. The reason behind that is he has to work with various teams. He has to work with the business users during the UAT, the user acceptance testing. He has to work with the developers and he has to work with many, many stakeholders. If that is not there, he or she cannot do. Yeah, one one. Question. Sanjay, sorry. Uh, here, uh, now can you go to that uh, slide where yes. you have the on the set? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, question is uh, this is the current trend, that's what you are suggesting. So, my question would be like specialist, it's you know, like specialist, and you know, one person can be specialist in one or two. Yes. And uh, when you go back to that concept skill, I don't think uh, realistically it is possible like you know one person can be specialist in five or six. How that could be like you know, jack of all trades. I'm not saying master of none, but there is a debate, you know, which is correct actually, can you suggest? Because we what, see, because what, we, what I'm saying is when you are doing the development, when you from that point of view, development, you are doing the software development, one what person will say yes and another will jump Okay. But think from testing point of view. Okay. Okay. Testing point of view, if the person say, I know only to test this kind of applications, I, I'm not saying only one tools. Because let me tell you, let me give you real like examples. So today we are doing a project, and let's say take any company, but the company they get the project from different customers, right? So today you get a customer from a pharma company. Okay. So you have to learn that domain, how the pharma company works. After six months, your project is over and the person may be again uh, allocated to a manufacturing company. So the person has to again learn the manufacturing. Again, maybe few days later, he allocated to some other projects. And for that testing resource to test it better. Okay, let me bring one more point. There was time when you say I'm a tester, they will give the test case to you. They will give the test data to you. And the tester has to just follow the steps, execute the test case, and just say pass time and fail. But those time is gone. Now the tester, he has to go through the system requirement specification. He has to understand the applications. He has to write the test case. He has to get the test data, and he has to execute it. And to do that one, that person needs to have multiple skill, whether he is already having or whether he has to learn. That is up to the person, like how really he is uh, passionate to do that one. But if the person is not doing that one, he cannot survive or she cannot survive. Because he is jumping from project to project. And in this uh, profession, we cannot say I can stick to one project and I have to do only this one because then if you are trying to do, then you are out of the game. What that's correct. No, that's correct. Actually, I am seeing the trend, but uh, I still have my feeling that, okay, you know, people are, I mean, uh, organizations are losing real specialist, so-called what is specialist, but yes. maybe it's not required now because of, like, you know, all the tools and all. However, in, in any way, you know, we are losing specialist. That's what yes. I can say. Yeah. But at least if you're not going to come safe also, you need to have at least T safe or pi safe. But I safe is is completely like uh, you will you will lose. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So here the question is when I say how to begin, suppose somebody is looking for a career in the testing, like wh where the person is supposed to start to know all the basics of testing. And like when I said that, before you get a job and after you get a job, that is completely different. So
so when somebody want to get a job whatever we have studied and there are so many uh, software testing forums where they have, uh, software, uh, um, they define each and every term so um, that one so this this is good there are for the rs placement there are where they cover some test, uh, where they cover some testing and also there is a and also there is a international board for the highest degree so also they cover they can so they cover this is not required to get certified they can just learn the basic that is good for them to start up and it will good to uh, just get higher but this is required only in the in the beginning but once they get a job they have to go and learn the organizations learn the domain and then they have to excel now this is not required i'll just uh, leave that one this also i'll go, come back but since we are having less time let me let me uh, say this one what i'm trying to say so see when when i'm saying uh, testing as a career options okay so all the testings are not the same because since we discuss here if somebody want to work in the testing like all these skills are required but like you said one persons cannot have all these skills so it is not feasible so the person may learn one or two but the person cannot become expert in everywhere or if somebody want to know then he can become like you know uh, just jack of all okay so for that the best place like where somebody if somebody want to make a career in the testing areas it is better to take any of the erp area there are some erp for the finance area there are for the hr area something for the purchasing something for the crm so if you name it like say if you go for the sap examples that covers your access control that covers your purchasing which is nothing but the hrm uh, software relationship management or there are modules for the human resource so when somebody trying to make a career that person will try to grow in that area say somebody say i know the sap human resource i know the hr so that person will become expert in that area so whatever testing comes he will be doing testing in that area so once the person become expert the project he goes or she goes they can do good or somebody will say i know the finance how, how the accounting works and i know how it works in the india i know how it works in the rest of the world and then that person say he say yes i'm the expert and i can test this kind of application so why i say save zone to this one because if you want to build a career in the testing and go for this erp that is sustainable but suppose somebody is just doing a testing job like say today you are doing a applications maybe small applications for 3 months or 6 months or a year today you tested you wrote some test cases you executed and next for the next project it is again new development it is something new so whatever knowledge that testers have learned in that project it completely gone for a new applications he has to learn again something new and that so then every time he has to learn something new so that person is not be expert or he cannot be expert he know how to test but he do not know the domain knowledge completely so that is risky for the testers but those who want to really make a testing career getting stick to any of the erp applications be it sap be be it oracle applications or be it some tool like one day and on top of this if they can know some of the tools some automation tools they can really make a good career but to end my session like i said at the beginning this is the best place to understand the complete business and out of all this industry any questions
Any questions from anyone? So uh, this is this is my end end of the slide. So if any questions, uh, please let me know. Hi everyone, can I request you please unmute? And, uh, and can, uh, I, can I request, request all you all, all, you all, all give all 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 applause for Unmuted. Many thanks, Nila. Muted. Thank you, Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And by the way, if you don't have any questions on behalf of the Knowledge Sharing Committee of our Association, I wanted to appreciate Nila Wai for the session. It was extremely informative. The questions asked shows the importance of the topics to us. Thank you so much, Nirabhai. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was a really, really great session. Thank you, Nirabhai. Thank you. And to all the participants, I appreciate you personally taking time to join us. Thank you for making the session successful and we appreciate your continued support. And special thanks to Chandrubhai and all your Sanjay and Arun. Sir. And uh, don't, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. And many thanks to you, you two also, because your contribution also very vital for everyone. Just, uh, just uh, one, uh, yeah. one, uh, one experience I want to share here. Welcome, welcome, Arun. You can share anything you want. So what is happening nowadays in testing area is uh, basically um, uh, these our testers who are uh, working since long time, they gain some um, functional knowledge, but uh, what they are uh, lagging behind is they don't know how to prepare data. I mean, they don't have uh, database knowledge or uh, any area wherever they are working. Uh, the technical knowledge they don't have. So they they only uh, having the um, functional knowledge. What the delivery team is now is doing is they are um, coming up with a, a process called SIPLET. So in SIPLET process, what they are doing. They are uh, asking the testers to create the test cases and uh, um, passing that test cases to developers. So what developers will do, developer has to execute each of the test case and provide a proof alongside of that. So in that case, what the delivery team is uh, getting, because uh, when testers are not testing and they don't bother about uh, uh, how much time it will take and uh, what is their uh, delivery timeline or the testing timeline. They are writing a number of test cases. Okay. So which is, uh, which is a good thing for the uh, delivery manager so that his product will be uh, bug free. So that is the trend going on in many uh, products nowadays. Uh, are you able to see my slide? Yeah. I had just kept thought to touch upon that one, but I have not done. So what you are saying is you can see this is ship left. So yeah, yeah, yeah. in the typ typical model, right, we do all the development and then we go for the testing. But in the ship left, yeah. instead of waiting till that, the activities can be started from beginning. Correct. Yeah. So that is a good point. Okay, that is happening in the market. And see the reason behind that is see. Also, other question is suppose you are having ten testers. Okay, so if you want to make them available in the project, you have to have some work for them, right? You cannot say yeah. suddenly say I am doing a project and just for everything is done just for a month I can build a team because if you bring on board a team. It is just go for 15 days to just get familiar and they cannot do anything. But if you want to keep a team, say QA team, you have to um, keep them involved. And also they have been keeping doing something and which should be uh, good for the organizations, good for uh, everyone. 
so that is that is why all companies are going like a sheep left so that uh, qa team can get involved from the beginning of the project till the testing is done Glad to know. Glad to know. Yeah, thanks all. Thanks all. You're welcome, bro. Nine seven. Looking for a new one. One 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 one